From her start on The Dick Van Dyke Show to her meteoric rise to fame and the lasting impact she made on the entertainment industry, Mary Tyler Moore was without a doubt one of the most influential public figures of the 20th century. And not only that, she was a powerful force of change at a time when society was in a rapid state of flux. But for all the years that Mary Tyler Moore played a fictionalized version of herself, there was so much more happening behind the scenes that most people weren't privy to. In this video, we're going to dig below the surface to discover a side of Mary Tyler Moore you might not be familiar with. And we'll touch on what led her hit show to be cancelled. Moore had a leg up on her competition. Before she became a household name, after co-starring on The Dick Van Dyke Show, Moore's career in the limelight began as Happy Hot Point, a tiny little elf who danced on top of Hot Point branded appliances for ads in the 50s. Her debut as a proper actress, however, was in 1959, when she portrayed the mysterious and glamorous secretary in six episodes of Richard Diamond, Private Detective. But you might not recall seeing her face in that show, because they actually filmed just legs for one episode and cut out her face in another, all of which was to keep the mystery, well, mysterious. Moore also had another side gig going at the time as a model for record covers. Perhaps you remember her gracing the cover of the Cha 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 LP. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stay tuned to find out what dark tragedies and struggles Moore had to contend with in her personal life. An unforgettable name. Moore had tried out for one of the leading female roles on The Danny Thomas Show, but she didn't make the cut. Even so, she made an unforgettable impression at her audition, and lucky for her, she had a very memorable name too. Danny Thomas couldn't get her name out of his head. There was something intriguing about that mesmerizing woman with three names, and he referred to her as exactly that when he recommended her to his buddy Dick Van Dyke, who was looking to fill the role of the female lead in his new sitcom. She wasn't afraid to wear the pants. In the 60s, much of America was hanging on to fairly old-school social norms, including the notion that women should wear dresses to work, school, or even at home. Pants were definitely a no-no for the fairer sex. So not surprisingly, some early visions of what Laura Petrie should look like had her decked out in traditional mom attire modeled after June Cleaver. Dress, apron, and all. But when Moore got her foot in the door and started having a bit more pull, she refused to let her character be depicted that way. The country was experiencing a great deal of social and cultural change, and Moore demanded Laura be allowed to wear pants. She based this conviction on actual friends of hers, and at the end of the day, she got her way. The Little Green Dress In the Season 5 episode, You Try to Be a Nice Guy, Moore wore a little green dress that ended up becoming somewhat iconic. It was a big deal at the time. Those revealing holes showed audiences a lot more skin than they were used to seeing on primetime TV. The dress was previously worn by a lady of the night named Sherry, played by Barbara Colby, whom we first met in the episode Will Mary Richards Go to Jail. Colby's character was such a hit with viewers, the show's producers brought her back on as an upright citizen trying her best to obey the terms of her parole. Her new lot in life was as a fashion designer, and thus the Green Beast was born. Unfortunately, Colby met a pretty awful end. She had just landed a co-starring role in the spin-off series Phyllis and had filmed three episodes when, on July 24, 1975, a van pulled up behind her while she and a friend were leaving an acting class in Venice, California, and shot the two without warning. Colby died at the scene before paramedics could arrive, and her friend only lived long enough to describe the assailants before she too passed away. Frustratingly, the case was never solved. Tough Crowd Mary Richards was originally envisioned as being a very different kind of character than the one she became. Initially, she was pictured as being a 30-year-old divorcee who moved out on her own after her husband left her. But CBS wasn't impressed by that premise and swooped in and shut the idea down. They insisted viewers wouldn't want to welcome a divorced woman, people of different religious faiths, New Yorkers, or dudes with mustaches into their living rooms. Breaking all kinds of records. It can't be overstated how much Mary Tyler Moore made history. She was the woman behind the scenes that broke countless records and shattered the metaphorical glass ceiling. Mary Richards gave audiences one of their first looks 
at a televised, successful, and independent woman. The series won 29 Emmy Awards and more won three Lead Actress Emmys. An Actress of the Year honor, in addition to being nominated the other year, she didn't take home the coveted honor. Candace Bergen, who was showered with her fair share of accolades, once said there wouldn't have been a Murphy Brown without the Mary Tyler Moore show. Family Tragedies and Health Problems More than anything, more love to bring joy to the hearts of others. She once said the greatest blessing she ever received was having a job that was centered around humor, but she still suffered major heartbreak. Moore's sister Elizabeth died when she was just 21 from an overdose of painkillers and alcohol. Her relationship with her brother was equally painful. John Moore, who was seven years younger than Mary and was suffering from kidney cancer, once asked his sister to help him commit suicide with ice cream laced with drugs. The suicide attempt failed, and sadly, John died just three months later at the age of 47. Moore's private battles behind the scenes were also quite draining on her spirit. Alcohol played a huge role in many of her personal struggles. Moore's mother was an alcoholic who wouldn't stop killing herself with the bottle even when Mary begged her to put it down. At the same time, Moore's father never showed her the love or affection she so desperately craved as a child. As an adult, Moore, too, turned to the bottle to ease her worries and suppress her pain. And just like that, she became what she always hated when she was young, an absentee mom. At 33, Moore suffered a miscarriage, but it wasn't her only medical worry. When the doctors tested her blood sugar, it was at 750 instead of the normal 80 to 120. She was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, but that didn't stop her from drinking or neglecting her son, Robert. Following in his mother and grandmother's footsteps, Robert, too, became an addict. In 1980, Moore received the phone call no mother ever wants to receive. Her son had accidentally shot himself and died. That was the moment that motivated her to start putting her life back together. She sobered up after checking into the Betty Ford Clinic. And she had a newfound determination to not let her vices and resentments rob her of having a life worth living. Better quit while you're ahead. The Mary Tyler Moore Show's co-creator, Alan Burns, once said that after doing the series for seven successful years, it was better to quit while they were ahead. Everyone involved in the series deeply loved being a part of it. Mary was one of the most enthusiastic participants, of course, and she was one of the last ones to sign on to the idea of shutting the series down because she so deeply loved the process, the show itself, its cast, and all the staff that helped make it happen. It was a tough time for everyone, but especially her. Love was in the air the evening the Mary Tyler Moore Show's highly anticipated final episode happened. The finale had it all. It featured guest stars Valerie Harper and Cloris Leachman returning one last time from their respective spin-off series, Rhoda and Phyllis, to say their goodbyes. An emotional final send-off with a classic group hug, a bittersweet rendition of It's a Long Way to Tipperary, and an extraordinary curtain call. And of course, one last comedic twist. When WJM-TV's new owner wanted to make some big changes, instead of canning the dim-witted anchor Ted Baxter, he fired the rest of the staff instead, Mary included. The audience at the taping and the cast and crew were in tears. Fans of the show had formed deep emotional relationship with the characters, but at least they were given a fitting farewell, one that is still looked back on as being the gold standards of series finales. The legacy of the series still lives on. The writers of Friends modeled their finale after it, and Tina Fey once shared that she fashioned the 30 Rock finale after the workplace camaraderie featured in the Mary Tyler Moore Show send-off. When Mary Tyler Moore passed away in January of 2017, the world mourned the loss of the first feminist TV icon. Now it's time to hear from you. What was your favorite episode of the Mary Tyler Moore Show? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.